The state is sweltering through one of its most extreme heat waves and there's worse to come. An absolute shambles, a national embarrassment and a disgrace. The heat is putting huge pressure on the electricity network. It's really quite a mess, it really is, yes. The Australian energy market operator says it had no option but to cut power to 90,000 South Australian homes and businesses. It's a political football that's pushing up our cost of living. The heatwave that's pushed across Australia in the past week has brought the country's energy policies into sharp focus. Australian industry leaders say it's not a pretty picture. Well, we should be an, an energy superpower. That's what Australia should be. We should be the, the country in which the rest of the world looks upon with jealousy. Today, an unusual alliance of 18 national groups, ranging from the Business Council, Australian Council of Trade Unions, Australian Conservation Foundation and St Vincent de Paul, warned there's no room for partisan politics when the reliability, affordability and sustainability of Australia's energy system is at stake. Australian industry group's Innes Willox was one of the signatories. The whole situation is becoming critical. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, we're seeing energy prices spike, so uh, by some calculations you've seen increases over the past two years in energy costs of about 170% excluding network costs and for, for many businesses that's just not sustainable. Australia's energy crisis has been a long time coming. Demand for power has actually fallen over the past decade, partly due to reduced economic growth but also due to the rapid uptake in rooftop solar power. Added to that the introduction of subsidies for climate friendly power under the Renewable Energy Target or RET supported by both major political parties. When the RET was introduced, it was envisaged that the renewables uh, sources of generation would be uh, meeting in the increased demand that was expected at the time. What's happened is that increased demand over many years has not materialised, and so the renewable sources have in fact driven out uh, for coal and gas sources of generation. An ageing fleet of coal generators began closing down, the latest being the emissions-intensive brown coal generator Hazelwood in Victoria's La Trobe Valley, due to shut next month. The reality is that there have been eight and soon to be nine coal-fired power stations that have shut down or been sequestered in Australia over the past couple of years. The problem with coal comes down to its affordability, its, the emissions it puts out, its flexibility and, most importantly, its bankability. And you cannot find any serious investor who is looking to invest in coal at the moment, given the economics behind it. Natural gas was expected to fill the gap, generators that can be turned up at a moment's notice. But most of Australia's gas is now being sucked out for export from Gladstone locked in on contracts that will net minimal revenue for Australian taxpayers for decades to come. Changes in government policy mean that rather than use gas to make electricity, we're now exporting it to Japan and in the middle of a blackout in South Australia last week, a gas-fired power station sat idle while South Australians couldn't, uh, couldn't turn their lights on. What we've seen is almost a tripling in gas prices over recent years uh, within Australia. So what was a real strength for the Australian economy uh, has become a real dead weight. South Australia's been accused of expensive power because of its dependence on wind. But in fact, high wholesale electricity prices are also occurring in Queensland whose power overwhelmingly comes from coal with no wind. Wholesale prices in the Queensland region of the national electricity market have reached quite extraordinarily high levels and uh, they've been staying at those high levels for the last five weeks and show no sign of going down again. Around here, $40-$50 a megawatt hour, that's what it's... The ANU's Dr Hugh Sadler warns the price hike will soon flow through to customers. This peak here in the red is South Australia. The average for the month of January was just under $200 a megawatt hour, which is $0.20 cents a kilowatt hour. 
Um, the normal price that we've been used to uh, up till now has been about $40 or 4 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's five times. Ironically, one reason for the Queensland price hike is the cost of delivering the coal seam gas for export. They're contributing something like 10% to energy demand growth in Queensland. So in Queensland we're, we're using gas to, we're exporting gas and using a great deal of electricity to do that, which contributes um, a double whammy, if you like, to the problems in Queensland. <laughs> With luck, the current heat wave won't reoccur this summer, but the country's energy problem will only worsen. In a few weeks, Hazelwood Power Station will close, halting a huge 20% of Victoria's energy production. And due to policy uncertainty, there's been no investment to replace it. The problems that we have in South Australia will, be, uh, are, will increasingly move up the country when already we're discovering that we have challenges in the other states, even without the kind of renewables mix that we have in South Australia. Industry wants urgent action, such as more coal seam gas mining. Gas is the missing link in all of this, uh, and we need gas supplies, and it's got to be a matter of urgency that uh, state governments uh, work to help get gas out of the ground. Now, it may be that we uh, provide uh, farmers with royalties for gas production. That's one option. But the Australia Institute's Richard Dennis believes extra gas will only be exported. What we need to do is change the electricity market rules so that big industrial users of energy could put their hand up and say, don't shut down a whole suburb, I'll, I'll shut down my plant for five or ten minutes. There are, there are companies offering to do this right now, but the national electricity market rules don't allow it. In the medium term, we need to invest more in renewables, particularly solar, and we need to start taking battery rollout seriously. Whatever the solution, says industry, it needs to be fast. I think we're getting to the point where we are reaching point critical. And if a major Australian industry decided to shut up shop tomorrow with the loss of thousands of jobs and move things offshore off the back of energy price, that would be the stake in the heart of uh, Australian energy policy and all the indications are we're not far away from that. <laughs>